I can show you something modern, but for, as we shall see in the VN day, you mm. have very little dots, very beautiful, made on highly, you know, high prices and very, uh, you know, uh, uh, skillful pieces of rock crystal. Mm. Uh, the li little dots, for instance, uh, for uh, the fur of the animals, on yeah. the image of the birds, and sometimes just for decoration like mm. that. And for that, we know that they use on rock crystal because that's different for older uh, things like glass. No, yeah, here. They used something close to that time, uh, that type, sorry, of uh, drill bit. Okay. Which is a rounded drill bit, you know. Okay. So here, this is a modern one. You know, a Chinese uh, drill bit with mm. uh, diamond powder already, uh, you know, uh, in the, coated in it. Okay. But uh, it was not like that, of course, during yeah. the early uh, medieval period, for early Islamic period. But for for just the shape, the general shape of the drill bit, we think that it was something okay. close like that, and okay. it was no more than one or two millimeters of diameter. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. And so it was attached to the same. Okay. A bow lathe and run according well, to Well, and I've seen similar um, bits like at Idar Oberstein where they. Oh, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, museum, yeah. Absolutely, because they use this kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, and yeah. It, yeah, 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 yeah. And there they had the foot pedaled drill. Oh, yeah, the. Um, how do you call that in English? That's. Uh, ladle lathe. Yeah. 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 Ladle, yeah. Yeah. Which was used in China versus oh, okay. in the Islamic okay. world. It was the bow. Okay, yeah, yeah, interesting. Very, yeah. In principle, yeah. very, very similar. Yeah, yeah, because there is the only way that you have to work brittle hardstone mm. like rock crystal. Right. Yeah, right. you can't work it. But this is the only way. Abrasion is the key for working brittle mm. material like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, like that since Neolithic. Yeah. Now, how easy is it to, uh, or as, as you're working with it using abrasives, mm -hmm. how easy is it to mess up and still manage to shatter the crystal or... Okay. So, uh, what is interesting is you never know what's going on beneath, you know, the surface of the raw material. Right. But uh, for a crystal, it's a bit easier, let's say. So, of course, uh, the raw material was selected by the uh, master of you know, the workshop. Right. Uh, or uh, the master designer or whatever, the uh, guy in charge of you know, acquiring the raw material, according to, of course, its uh, clearness, Mm, and yeah. also, if uh, he's got cracks and so on, it's right. going to be rejected, of course, right. you know. And uh, then, if you have a pure and uh, perfectly, uh, you know, um, well-made rock crystal and so mm. on, you're almost sure that you won't, you know, uh, not sure 100%, but you have more chance, you know, to go through the process without breaking the piece. Right. Okay. Right. But then you never know, you know, sometimes, you know, the structure of the crystal you yes. know, during the work it can uh, be uh, uh, horrible. But most of the time, you know, when you have the experience and so on, you know how yeah. to, uh, you know. You get a feel yeah, for yeah, your material. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But sometimes, you know, you can't avoid that the piece was going to break and so on. Yeah. So it's possible when you you start with a big piece, you know, and break at some point, it's possible to take one part to remade a smaller mm. object and so on. Yeah. Sometimes it's just uh, impossible. Right, right. And uh, what is interesting, it's uh, we don't have for, um, for instance, for timid craftsmanship, we don't have, uh, we never found a workshop with this with material and so on. So we don't know what happened, you know, yeah. uh, you had a breakage and so on. Hmm. So, yeah. no idea. But we assume that if it's possible, if the best material was large enough, it can be reworked. And so right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I mean, every good craftsman yeah. recycles. Of so. course, and it was so valuable, your yeah. crystal, you know, yeah. at that moment. You know, uh, it's 
possible, in, okay, there are several possibilities from where the raw material was coming from. Mm. But at the moment, we have this hypothesis that most of the big, large crystal, very pure and clear, mm. were coming from Madagascar. Wow. Yeah. So that was extremely rare material yeah. and extremely valuable. So you don't want to uh, lose. Uh, right. You know, and yeah. so it has to get all the way from Madagascar to Egypt. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And not all, yeah. Yeah. So that was something. Yeah. yeah. That was something. It could uh, apparently, I don't know, a trip of uh, months. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And a heavy cargo too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with the camels and so on through the deserts and so on. Yeah. yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, something. Uh, right. Rock crystal was extremely valuable. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, working it took months as well for some pieces, for mm. some big pieces. Mm. Yeah. Especially, you know, for uh, the shaping, the rough shaping, the sewing and so on. Yeah. Then, for the carving of uh, the decoration, that's something different when you are extremely, uh, you know, uh, when you master your craft and so on, that can be pretty fast. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I was extremely surprised, you know, when uh, I worked in India, you know, mm. um, I discovered that, uh, you know, it was a shock because uh, I expected that, you know, carving in relief pieces of rock crystal took weeks and uh, maybe months, you right. know. The guys know so well what they have to do, mm. you know, mm. that uh, they could carve a piece very quickly. And okay. Easily. Easily, I don't know, but quickly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah.